Oh, hi everybody and welcome back to Not Another Bonsai channel. Well, in this video, I thought I'd do something a little bit different. Of course, you know, it is coming up to Christmas now and uh, everybody is getting into the festive spirit. But of course, you know, what with uh, the cost of living crisis and inflation, you know, taking a bit of a, a, a bite onto our, uh, our wallets and what we can spend this Christmas, I thought what I'd do is I'll share with you how I go about making my own homemade Christmas wreath. You know, because of course it's easy to go out and buy one, but you know, if you can make your own, it's a little bit more special. So in this video, I thought I'd show you exactly how I go about doing that and the step-by-step -step instructions on how to make your own homemade Christmas wreath. Right, so if you are gonna make your own Christmas wreath, there of course are gonna be a few things that you are gonna to need to get. Uh, one of the main things is you're gonna need some kind of a, a ring, a metal ring to build your, your wreath around. Now this I bought from a, a charity shop a few years back. It was only something like 50p, 50p or a pound. Um, now, of course, you know, if, if you can't find these or they're not available to you, you can go about it in another way and you can make your own circular metal ring. Now, this has just been made out of garden wire. So garden wire, or of course, you can use the uh, kind of like uh, the, the, the green mesh or the metal mesh that you use for temporary fencing. So if you crumple that up and form it into a ring, wrap around garden wire just to give it a bit more rigidity. You can, of course, make your own metal ring that way. And that's a very cheap budget way of building a ring. But ultimately, you just want something that's you know, firm enough to support the, the wreath and ultimately keep its shape. So there are going to be a few other things that we're going to need. And I'm quite lucky that I can find most of these things around the garden. So the first thing you're going to need is this moss. Now, this is just basic garden moss. This isn't to be mistaken with sphagnum moss, albeit it does look very similar in its texture and its appearance, but this is just basic garden moss. And what you want to do is collect as much of this as you can, preferably in big sheets. So if you can do it in kind of clumps like this, not individual small little pieces, but clumps, that will help us when we come to pad out the wreath and it'll just give it a bit more bulk. So yeah, just get as much of this as you can. And I'm just going to go around the garden here and just try and you know, to collect as, as much as I can because, of, you know, more is better than less. You know, in this case, you know, having too much is far better than not having enough. So we're going to need some holly. So preferably you want some with some berries on the end. Now, ideally, when you're going out collecting this, you do want the berries to be quite near the end of the branch rather than lower down uh, because we will be sticking that into the, uh, the base of the wreath. So all you would do is just come in here and snip round about back in there, you know, leaving a good, you know, few inches because of course we can trim this later on when we come to style the wreath. So we just snip that like so, and then that there is our piece. So we'll we get a few more like this, and then we'll move on to getting the cypress branches. So when it comes to the cypress branches, uh, I'm just going to use this. Uh, this is a Japanese full cypress with the nice almost like a yellowy tinge to the leaves makes for a very nice festive scene and all you would do is just cut a few branches off just like so uh, similar lengths to what we did with the holly and of course we can trim these up later on when we come to style the wreath and of course if you don't have japanese full cypress you could always use leyland cypress or lalandi this will work absolutely fine uh, so what we would do is just exactly the same thing Take a few, if I could just come in here, snip that just in here. And then we can use this branch, which has just gone down here. There you go. And then that'll work just fine. Right, so now that we have our bowls of, that's our moss that we collected from the garden with a bit of grass hanging to the bottom, we'll pop that down there. And this, of course, is everything else. That's our holly and our cypress branches. So it's fantastic. We are gonna need a few other bits and pieces. We are gonna need some garden string. This could be brown or green, but I'm going to use brown for this. We are going to need some small pieces of wire. So this, of course, could be uh, bonsai wire or it could just be general garden wire. As it turns out, this is just basic garden wire. It's just uh, two mil, I think, two mil gauge wire just cut into six to eight inch length pieces. 
So you're going to need quite a few of them. You will, you might also need some uh, more flexible garden wire. So this is slightly bendier. This is just a basic, I think this is again, two mil, but it's got a plastic coat into it. Again, this is just a bit more flexible. You may need that. And then just as a bit of decoration, it's, it's not necessarily a necessity, but it just adds a bit of extra flair. You could just take some red ribbon and just tie a bow into it, just to put top and bottom of your wreath, just to give it a bit more of a, a festive feel. So to start this project, uh, I'm going to I'm going to use this mesh, but of course, you know, it wouldn't make a difference. You could use the green mesh if you wanted to go about it that way. And the first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to have to get your moss. So the thing here is, it's a bit fiddly, but what you're going to have to do is just lay the moss gently over the ring. Now, this is where having big pads, this is where having, you know, large pads of moss pays off. Because if you have small little pieces, it's going to be very fiddly attaching that to this wire. If you have nice big pads, it's a lot easier just to place it on there. And then, of course, we can wrap some string around and tie this to this uh, metal ring when we're done and when it's nice and full. So it's just a case of getting the moss on there in such a way that it covers everything. You don't want, you know, the thing is you don't want the wire to show, obviously. You want to disguise that with the moss. And the moss does two things. First off, it adds a nice pad for you to attach everything else to, you know, when we come to the holly and the cypress branches and everything else. And then the other thing it does is it, it hides the wire. You know, you, you don't particularly want to see the wire. I mean, it won't hurt, but it just looks a bit basic, I think, if you have the wire. It looks a bit amateurish. And albeit this is homemade, you know, and it is we are doing this on a budget, we, we don't want to give the appearance that it's been done on a budget. So now what you would do is go back to your string. You'll need a lot of string. So I'd find the loose end and just unravel a lot because what you'd want to do is tie it around and then just gradually weave it around the ring just to hold it all in place. And don't worry if you can see the string. Th this isn't important at this stage because of course we are gonna put all the cypress branches on there too and that is gonna disguise it. So you won't see any of the string. So all you would do is just wrap this around. This is quite fiddly because you need to get the wire underneath without disturbing your moss too much. I'm gonna get the string, wrap it around underneath and then tie it off. Now again, you could say it'd be better to put the knot on the back, and maybe it would. But again, you know, once you do that knot, you're not going to see it anyway. And I'd do a double knot just in there. Let's do that nice and tight, and then see if I can cut that with my secateurs just like that. And then it's kind of a fiddly process, this, but what you want to do is wrap this around the, the ring. So you want to go around like so, bring this back up about two inches away from where you did your last wrap and then just go around and then just continue this process all the way around making sure that the moss is held tightly to the ring so we just continue this process of just going around and around and of course when you make your way all the way around and you come back to where you where you started you just cut off the string about here and then just you can just go around if you can if I'm going to have enough string should do just about and then just tie that off try to find out where your other bit of string started there it is just in there and then actually I might go back on that I'm going to tie it to this so it's just making sure it's it's tied on there nice and strong nice and tight and it doesn't come off and again, we are going to attach a lot of stuff to this. So again, we don't have to be too neat at this stage. This is just creating a base. And ultimately, the moss holds the moisture in. So it does help somewhat with keeping the other branches and that alive. Right, so this is our ring of moss. So, you know, it's, it's starting to look like a wreath. You know, it is getting there. So now the next bit is we want to bring back our, our cypress, our cypress branches. We just put that over here. And what you would do here is you want to create a nice festive pattern, if that makes sense. So I always try to make this look a bit like a Christmas tree. So what I would do is you can see this branch here. This is 
quite long. We don't need it that long. We'll cut this in about half. You do ideally want a bit of a, a woody stem because, of course, we're going to poke this into the, the moss. So up here, it's all nice and supple. So if we go up here, up here, it's quite woody. We'll cut it there just like so. We don't need that bit. And then just like you would a cutting, we cut back some of the lower branches just like so, just like that. Now that is going to put, actually, you know, tell I, we'll just get rid of that. There you go. So that will be perfect now just to stick that into our moss. And we continue to do that all the way around and create a nice padding of cypress branches. So what we would do with these is when, when we can come to tuck these in, you can pretty much tuck them in anyway. You can just sort of make a hole in the moss and just weave it in. But what you would do, but just put that bit more in shot there, you just find a place, make sure that's a nice woody and you don't want this to be too supple, otherwise this won't work. Just take it and then just poke it in and just give it a wiggle and a push, a wiggle and a push. And there you go, that should stay in place. And we continue to do that with the other ones. So we grab another branch just here. You can see this is quite a wispy one. You could probably just strip these off with your hand, just like so. And again, this is quite woody. It's probably on the cusp, but again, this will work. So we just go a little bit further along. This is where our tie point is for the string. So if we just go just behind that, just to hide it somewhat, we can tuck that in and then just push the, the cypress in and that's that. So it's starting to come together a bit now. So what we would do is you can see this section here looks a little bit, a little bit bald. So all you would do is just try to get a piece of foliage that is somewhat full and has some leaves. So I'm just going to use this piece here. We just cut the end off just like that. And then this small little piece we can just tuck just in here, just to cover it. And this maybe could go in a little bit more. Of course, we could wrap that round. This we can tie in a bit more like that. That will look quite good. So we'll come around here. So yeah, it's all starting to look quite good. Right, so the next thing we need to do, we need to go back to our lengths of skinny garden wire. So these are the pieces that are about six to eight inches long. And what you would do now is, the thing is, if you took this wreath and you just hung it up, all of these bits of cypress branches would just fall off. So we need to tie them into the wreath. And what we would do is a lot of this is just just uh, using your creativity. So we wouldn't want this this branch here, for instance, hanging down. We'd want that to go around and try to fill this this section of the wreath and make it look a bit a bit better and ultimately cover the moss. So what we would do then is take our wire, put it in that section that we want to hold down. You'd wrap it round, and then of course where you have your metal frame, you would loop the wire around. The metal frame. So if you have a lot of wire, you can twist it. But what I like to do is just loop it around the wire. And ultimately, what that does is it locks it in place and it makes it a lot easier come January when you, you know, it's a sad thing to say, but there is going to come a time where you're going to have to take this apart. And if you really twist that on really hard, you know, getting in there with wire cutters and trying to trim it back can be quite difficult. But so if you just loop it around to the frame, it's usually a lot easier to do. And then all you do is just go around looking at each section, deciding where you would like to place each, each branch. And when you're happy with that position, you take your wire, you take your wire and you wrap it around the cypress branches and the moss, right round the back to the frame. And then just wrap the wire around just in there. Sometimes it is fiddly, but just, you know, really get your fingers in there and you, you want to lock it in because if you don't, you know, on a windy day, this might fall to pieces and, you know, it's, uh, it can ruin the whole thing. Now, of course, you could say, well, you can see the wires. Now, that doesn't matter too much uh, because we are going to put other bits and pieces on here. But, you know, if you are worried about that, you could use green wire. Um, but I, I think, you know, that this skinny little wire, if this is like one or two mil wire, it, it, it's going to do the job and you can't really see it that much. Um, you could be a bit more pernickety when it comes to your styling ideas and try to disguise it a little bit. But I think 
a little bit of wire here and there, just holding these branches in. It sh shouldn't create much of an issue. So I think we can agree that's starting to look quite nice. You know, it's looking very festive. And of course, you know, if you did want to trim some of these these end pieces, you could do that. You could just go in and give it a bit of a, a haircut just to trim up some of these edges, just keep that nice rounded appearance. But so some of these bits that are popping out the side, I think I, I would leave them because I think it creates a nice festive natural feel. So I, I wouldn't ruin it. I would, you know, I wouldn't trim it back entirely. Some of these, maybe that's a little bit too long. So if I just hold that like so, we'll just come in here and just give that a trim. But don't go too crazy on your trimming. You know, do leave a little bit, you know, a little bit of foliage popping out the edge because it gives a nice natural feel. All right, so that that isn't all. Of course, we do have to add our holly. Now, if you're interested in growing holly, you know, especially if you want to have a holly, an English holly bonsai, you know, then keep these berries because you can propagate these. Uh, there's inside these, uh, I think there's a couple of seeds in each one, you know, stratify them. They might take a while, might take a year, might take two to germinate, but put them in a pot of soil and you could end up with a little holly tree. So I might keep them, I'll pop them just down here. But we're interested today in creating the wreath. So what you would do with a branch like this, again, you're looking at the same sort of length as we were with the, with the uh, cypress branches. So again, sort of six to eight inches, cut that in about here. Cut off the excess, we don't need this. And then of course we don't need the lower branches because much like a cutting, we're going to keep that bare because we want to push that into our wreath. Now, of course, when it comes to placement, it's completely up to you. You know, if you would like a piece of holly there and a piece of holly there, then that's fine. If you would like holly going all the way around, then that's up to you. You know, this is where personal creativity comes in. I mean, if you, if you want the whole thing covered in holly, you're more, you know, you got go for it, you know, see how it looks. I'm going to have quite a few holly branches or holly stems in my bowl here, so I can, I might do that. I might go around. And all you would do is you can see where your wire, your uh, bits of wire are, where they're holding the, the cypress branches in place. So all you would do is take this and push it into the, the moss or through the cypress branches and into the moss. And sometimes it can be a bit of a problem. If it is an issue and you can't get it in, I would cut the tip of your branch at an angle, just like that, just to create a bit of a point just on the tip. That might help you when it comes to poking it in. So again, if we just go back to this, it's kind of, um, if I do this with my left hand, you might be able to see a bit better. So all you do is just take that and then poke that in just like so. And then if you're worried about that po you know, popping out, we can use a bit of green wire. And this is where our green wire from before came in because we can use a little bit of this just to tie that in place. But if we continue this process and we just put bits of holly all the way around the, the wreath, then um, we, can, you know, we can go back with the wire and just tie in any odd bits. Now, when you come to the base, so you can see this is the bottom of our, of our wreath. Now, instinctively, you would think we'd carry that around and go like that. But of course, if you do that, you're going to go around and the branches on this side are going to be upside down. So you, you, you want to do, you do your branches that way and carry on going around. What it does mean is you'll have two stems sort of going like that. You have a bit of a gap here. Now, that is where our ribbon comes in, because what we will do at a later date, when all of the holly is on, we'll put a ribbon just on there just to fill that gap just in there. But for the time being, we'll get back to putting the holly in the in the wreath. So we just take that, push that just in there. So wiring the holly on is much the same as how we did the, the cypress branches. We just take a little piece of wire, maybe about six, maybe eight inches long. I grab some wire cutters and just snip a small bit just like so. Now Whereas with the cypress, we just stuck it on anywhere just to cover the, the moss. With this, we will need to be a little bit more uh, careful. We need to think about styling ideas. So do we want those branches there to go, or those leaves to go under that? Well, possibly, because we can see these berries a bit better. But let's, uh, yeah, so let's, let's do that first. So that, that looks quite nice if we have that like that. So what we would do is just take the wire just over the top. And again, this is green. 
green wire. So your holly will disguise the the garden wire or the silver wire that we used before, and this green wire will just blend in quite nice. And again, same same idea. You fold it round. You can either twist it to itself or just fold it round onto the the back of the frame. Just twisting it in position, and there you go. That should hold that just in position, just like so. And then if you just do a little bit of finesse in here, just to bring that leaf just in the front there. That's a funny looking leaf, but I might keep. Well, actually, now it's going back on itself. Let's get rid of that, and that looks quite nice. So if we come around. So this is near our, our top is just up here. So that's where our hanging hook is. So if we grab ourselves another bit of wire, again about I'd say about yeah, six inches long. And then just think about position. Think about how you would like your your bit of holly to sit. That to me isn't looking too bad. And then just kind of position this. You can weave it through the leaves. And that just helps disguise it a little bit. And of course, if the wire goes underneath the leaf, it's even better because it hides it. And then you just wrap that edge or end of the wire under there. And then we get another bit of wire, or the end of wire even, on the other side. And just take that and wrap that round the other end. And that should hold that into position. And of course, if you just want to do a little bit of tidying up just to get rid of that leaf that's going back on itself, this leaf might just be able to go like that. That's looking quite good. That looks a little bit congested. Let's get rid of that one. And they can see these leaves just in here. Looks quite nice. And then we have that leaf that would just go in there like so. It looks quite good. Now, what we want to do now is we, we need to position our bows. Now, how I go about doing this is, again, sorry, I'm just off camera for the minute. I'm just cutting another piece of wire, much like we did before. So just this. Now, the way I usually do this is we need our bow to be nice and tight. And then we just want to thread the wire just underneath, just like so. You've just threaded it through the bow, okay? And what you want to do is you want to bend part of your wire up and part of your wire down, okay? And then just position that on to where you would like it on the wreath. And then the piece of wire that is going up is obviously going to go upwards. And the piece that's going down is just going to go down. So we just wrap that round. All of that and then that can go in there like that and then of course the one that's going up just tucks in the upper portion and then just tidy up your bow a little bit make it look a bit a bit neat and that doesn't look too bad so there we have it the finished Christmas wreath and and to think you know that's made from a few things that we found around the garden you know, a bit of holly, a bit of cypress, and a little bit of garden moss. And you can create something that looks very festive. Well, let's go put this by the front door and I'll show you how it looks. So all I would do is just put the loop just over the screw. It's just up in the wall just there. And then that is the Christmas wreath just by my front door. So thanks for joining me on this one. I thought it'd just be a fun thing just to show you how I go about creating my Christmas wreath each year. And of course, you know, you don't only have to stop there. You can build on this. You can add other uh, other material. You could add uh, you could add pyracanthi. You could add ketoniaster. You could add hawthorn. You could add blackthorn. Uh, you could, of course, add ivy. You know, holly and ivy. Nice festive relationship there. You could add pine cones. Uh, you could add any other kind of mistletoe. You could add any any other type of material that you liked to make a nice festive wreath and you know you know the beauty of this the fantastic thing about this it's individual it's individual it's a piece of you you know and, and friends and family who come to visit you over the christmas period you know when they come to visit your place they, they see that on your front door and they'll probably ask you now where did you get that who made that for you you know of course when you tell them that you made it wow that's a yeah that's a fantastic thing so i really do recommend that you give this a go if you do you know and uh, you know if you do give this a go um, yeah, sh sh you know, share it with me, you know, put, put a comment in the comment section below and uh, maybe send me a photo of, of what you've done. Um, if, if you're a YouTuber and you have a channel, you know, uh, put a video out, you know, and uh, I'd love to see it. 
And uh, yes, yeah, just a fantastic thing to do, especially if you're, you're doing Christmas on a budget. Very cheap, affordable thing to do. And uh, as, as I was saying, you know, all of this, all of this material is available for me in the garden. So apart from a little bit of wire and some, um, you know, a bit of ribbon that costs pennies, you know, it's a very, very cheap thing to do. Anyway, guys, I think we'll call that it. So as always, take it easy, have a great day, and I'll catch you on the next one.